Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Andrea of Alu Knits on Instagram. Uh, if you have found me here um, or on Instagram, you might know me for my maker self-care reels that I release every Friday on Instagram. Um, I try to be really good about posting them here on YouTube and on my website as well, but I am a little bit behind. Uh, I'll admit that, but I will get caught off caught up I promise um, so anyway it feels like it's been a while since I recorded a vlog um, I think it's actually really only been two to three weeks uh, but it's just been a really busy two weeks for me um, if you watch my last episode you know that my siblings were coming in town to visit me and my family um, and so they both just left today um, they were here for two weeks about while well, my sister was here for two weeks my brother was here about about like five days um and it was a really good time uh it was a really good time and i am so happy that i got to spend time with them again i'm so happy that my kids got to play with their aunt and uncle um and just spend a lot of good quality time together um, but i'm really ready to be back here with you all and talking about yarn and knitting and all that stuff um and so today's episode actually will be mostly just showing you uh what's been going on with my fo's and my whips i'm going to show you all the yarn i've got recently um I've gotten a lot of yarn in the past two weeks. Looking at it here all laid out in front of me right now is a little scary. Um, but in my defense, a lot of them were pre-orders that just happened to all come in at the same time. Like two of them came in in the same day. Um, I also had some friends who recently gifted me yarn from their stash. Um, and so anyway, I just have a lot of yarn to show you. So I think um, that'll be today's podcast episode as I'll just be showing you all my new stash acquisitions. And of course, we'll go over the wellness tip at the end. Um, so first, let me show you. I only have one FO to show you since the last time um, I did a podcast. And that is this, my open edge tee. This is by um, Jesse May. And it is in the Red Pansy Monet Impressionisms Club colorway for the month of May. Uh, that painting was called uh, Soleil Levant. Okay. Um, and it just knit up so beautifully. You can see, like, there's not really any pulling at all. It's just kind of subtly striped throughout. And I didn't alternate skeins at all for this. Um, and that is incredible to me. I kind of just, like, gambled with it and went with it but you know I've been knitting with Kelly's yarn since the beginning of this year and I have noticed that at least you know when you buy the same when you buy all the skeins at the same time that you know I guess technically the same lot that you know there's not a ton of variation between them she's super consistent um yeah and I really love this tea um I think maybe the next time I make it I might lengthen it even more I did knit in an inch longer on the body than the pattern calls for just because I feel like my torso is a little bit longer than maybe most people um it's still a very cropped kind of feel like the bottom of this hem hits kind of right at my hip bone down here um and so maybe the next one I make I might make just a little bit longer but I can see this really working well to layer over a dress or to wear with like a high-waisted skirt high-waisted pants that kind of thing um but I really love it um the v-neck is a little deep um but, you know, with a tank or a bralette or whatever underneath, it is just fine. Um, and, yeah, it's going to be perfect for these Texas springs and falls. Um, yeah, so I'm super happy with it. Uh, so let's move on to my whips. Um, I know the last time I did a podcast episode, I told you guys that I felt like I had so many whips and was feeling a little overwhelmed. Um, that has not gotten better. If anything, I have accumulated more whips. Uh, so anyway. So first, I'm still working on that pair of socks for my mom, the Garia socks, Garia, Garia socks. Um, I made a little bit of progress on them. I'm almost to the heel flap gusset area on one pair, and that was because I was working on them for a little bit because I was filming my reel on how to use nine-inch circulars. So I could, I stuck one of them off of my 40-inch, and I stuck them onto a 9-inch so that I could fiddle with that and kind of get the hang of it. And I do admit, I do knit faster. Or I feel like I knit faster on just like a nine inch circular. But, you know, like I don't know if it's worth all the fiddling I had to do to get my hands used to it. Um, I might still stick to, I don't know if I'll go back to two at a time because I realize now that two at a time seems to feel like it goes really slowly. Um, and back when I was a beginner knitter and I was only knitting socks, um, it didn't feel super slow to me. But now that I'm a faster knitter and knitting garments and all that, it does feel kind of slow to be knitting two at a time. Um, so I might 
go back to magic loop, but just one at a time, maybe, because that did feel faster to me when I was just knitting one sock on a magic loop. Um, or I might do nine inch. I don't know. I'll kind of vary between the two. I also think my gauge definitely, my gauge, my tension definitely changes a little bit. Um, so we'll see. So I haven't made a ton of progress on those, um, but I'm almost to the heel turn. All right, next we have my husband's sweater, the Rift sweater by Brooklyn Tweed. I have gotten further on this one. I got to the separation for the front and back. So let's see here. This is the back, I think. Yeah, so you can see I've got most of the body done. Now I'm to the separation. And you can see it's 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 got a very nice pattern to kind of where you're starting to increase and shape the armholes. Yeah. My goal is to try to kind of like knit on it a cut like at least once a week just to make sure I'm making progress on it slowly um, and not completely not touching it. That's that one. Uh, let's see what else. So I summer sorrel tea. I have made a little progress on that. I did finish the yoke and I'm now just knitting on the body. So oh, I am about to add on the second. So here it is now. So the yoke's all done. I've separated for sleeves. I've knit about almost two inches on the body at this point. Yeah. Got a little bit of this overcast here. Let me see if I can move that and make it a little better. Yeah. Maybe if I turn down the lighting here, hopefully. Sorry guys, I feel like the lighting's not great today. Um, I did get a ring light. So I'm testing it out using it, but I'm not sure if the colors are showing up super well on here. Yeah, so that's my summer sorrel. It's at that stage. Sorry, I'm just going to move everything so I'm not so the lighting is a little bit better. It's at that stage right now where, um, you know, it's just like mindless stockinette which is great because then I can take it on the go when we're going places like on the weekends. We spend a lot of time at the park for my kids to play outside. Um, and I like to just sit on a bench nearby and just kind of knit and watch them. And this is perfect because I don't need to pay attention. Um, I can even knit stockinette without looking most of the time. So it's great. I can get something done, but still be paying attention to my kids, not losing my place and whatever I'm working on. Yeah. All right. So my next whip is the Rospico Tea. This is an along avec Anna. Anna? Uh, I hope that's how you say her name, uh, pattern. She's doing a knit along. She's been doing a knit along. I think it started back in April, maybe, or May. Um, she asked me to join, um, and I was really happy to. And the knit along runs until the very end of July. Um, so I picked the Rospico tee. This is what it looks like. So you can see it's a uh, bottom up tee. Um, you seam the shoulders together and do a little bit of a sleeve, and it's got this pretty lace at the very bottom that you start out with. So I've just gotten past the lace, and I am on the snuckinette for this one as well. And this is done. This is in. There we go. This is the Wandering Flock Pistachio Cream in her single ply fingering base. I hope it's showing. I think it is how pretty this is it's like this light mintish green with specks of gold yellow um it's so pretty and the and because it's single ply and it has a slight halo to it um it really glows in person um i'm trying to show you but i feel like my lighting is not great today uh but i posted a picture of this recently on my instagram and i think that was like a really accurate picture in terms of like the way it looks the color the glow of the yarn yeah um I really like it. And it's so soft. The single ply is so soft. Um, I've never knit a single ply garment before. I've used it plenty in shawls. I've even knit a pair of socks in single ply before. Um, but I've just never done it for a garment. I don't know if it'll pill or not or be prone to pilling. But what I do, what I can tell already is that the finished tee will be so, so soft to the touch. Like, it'll be so soft. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we'll see. I think returns are well. There'll be more single ply garments, maybe. In my future, I could see it for like tees where you're not getting a, like a ton of pilling between the sleeves and the arms and the body. Um, yeah. And the Wandering Flock, she does a lot of single ply fingering. Her sock base has only so far been offered for sock sets. And so I just really wanted her yarn so badly. Um, and so I thought, you know what, I will just try the single ply. And I'm really glad I did because I think this will be really great. 
All right, so the next whip I've got, I told you I had a lot. The next whip I've got is the Petal Party Crop by Samantha Guerin. Guerin Designs. I hope I said your name right, Samantha. Um, this was a new release. The pattern only just came out, I think, like a week ago. And I've been looking at this pattern ever since been, it's been in testing. And for a while, it's kind of like, oh, man, I wish I'd signed up to test this. Now I'm kind of glad I didn't because um, what I'm using for it is my June Monet yarn from the Red Pansy. So let me show you a skein, uh, see, show you it caked up. I, re I really love to show off yarn in their skeins. Um, but when my sister was here, she really wanted to wind some yarn for me. And I mean, who's going to say no to that? Um, and she really wanted to wind up what she called the blue yarn. Um, she really wanted to see it wound up and caked up. So I let her. Um, so here it is in its cake. Let's see, that's fairly accurate. Yeah. So you can see it's got blues. There's little bits of tealish aqua colors in there as well. Um, I will pop the painting next to here so you can see the comparison. I think Kelly did a really great job translating that painting onto yarn colorway. I really, really love it. Um, yeah. Um, one thing you might not know about me, I really love blue. I know I don't tend to knit with it a lot, um, but I'm kind of slowly like going back in that area. I feel like right now, color-wise, I'm like all over the place, which you can probably see from my whips. Like, um, yeah. But anyway, so I am uh, working on the back. So this pattern is knit. Um, you know, you do the back back shoulder part and then the front, and then you join together and around. So I'm on the back part right now. And you see, this is so pretty. It's got a lace detail. It's got a slight garter stitch. Um, edging kind of like every couple rows and then plain stockinette in the middle and then repeat it on the other side as well. Yeah, let me give you a closer look like that. But yeah, it's super pretty. It's super pretty worked up in this colorway. Um, I am really happy with it, happy with it so far. Um, and actually, while I'm showing you this one, I'll show you the new stitch markers I got too. So these are from Studio Knit Boop from Knit Boop on Instagram. Um, Yura is her first name and this is her pomegranate set so there's like it comes with like three little pomegranate seeds a full pomegranate another pomegranate seed there's a like a cut open pomegranate and I'm trying to find which whip it ended up on I think it ended up on this one. Oh yes it did okay right here yeah they're so freaking cute um they're so cute um and especially the little pomegranate seeds like i just like want to squish them i kind of do they're 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 hard so it's not like they squish but like it's just like yeah i love it <laughs> if you can't tell i'm like very tactile um and so yeah but the, the stitch markers are so freaking cute so cute anyway so that's petal party crop um and then my last whip I've got to show you is a test. So many of you might have figured out by now, I test a lot for Gabriella Tremenio of Gabriella Makes on Instagram. Um, she's a good friend of mine. Uh, we are we know each other just through the local knit group that we're in in Austin. Um, and I started testing with her, testing for her at the beginning of March 2020. And I've just kind of been testing for her ever since. Um, so this is the latest one to be in testing. This is the Bobby T. And you've probably seen it on Instagram. It is super cute. It is a drop shoulder tee in DK weight, and it just got bobbles all over. Um, she actually calls this the popcorn stitch, so they're like I think a little smaller than bobbles are. Eee! Look how cute it is! Oh my god, I am like not the best at bobbles yet, so mine like I feel like are a little like hit or miss with like how like punchy they are or how like poppy they are. Oh, that's a pretty good section right there. Yeah. This yarn is by Mountain Laurel Fiber Company. Um, and it is from her um, her Christmas slash winter or Nutcracker collection this past uh, year. And this is a colorway Nutcracker Sweet. And it's in her classic DK base. It is like, it feels like a light worsted to me. Um, but yeah, isn't it so pretty? I love it. Like the pale pink, the blue throughout. Okay, I guess I am knitting with a lot of blue right now. Yeah, okay, yeah. Um, but yeah, this it's so pretty, so, so pretty. I'm really loving how it's working up. Yeah, anyway. So yeah, I'm working on a lot of things right now. I'm really excited to see them all done, whenever that is. I've got a lot of knitting to do in my future. Um, yeah. Oh, let me show you a skein of the Nutcracker Suite, or a cake of it. Look at that. 
it's so pretty the pale pink and the blues yeah yeah love it i can't wait to see the tea finished um so yeah that's in testing right now and i am testing that for her um so that's it for my whips i know it was a lot and so now we're gonna move on to what i've gotten in the mail so far it's a lot of stuff guys um so I talked to you, I told you about the Knit Boop stitch markers I got. I got one more stitch marker from her. This is the Edelweiss stitch marker. Look how pretty it is. Okay, I'm trying to get it to focus. Is that focused? It's got little, I assume, Edelweiss flowers in there. Anyway, it is so pretty. Um, Sound of Music is like one of my favorite movies. Um, and I sing the Edelweiss song a lot to my kids, kind of like as a lullaby. And so um, this dish marker is like really special to me. Yeah. Oh, and like, I guess a little tip. So some people, some stitch uh, marker makers, some of their stitch markers will be on a lobster claw clasp instead of like a, a, a ring, like a jump ring. And so what I do, because uh, I don't like to stick lobster claws on my stitches. I have this weird thing where I feel like it's tugging the stitch out of pattern and hanging on it. <laughs> I'm sure it doesn't actually, but it's my own personal thing about it. But what I do is I stick the lobster clasp onto like a, a regular stitch marker. Like I have a bunch of these hexagons. So I just stick it onto one of them and then I can slide it right on my needle. So that's a little tip for you just to kind of make all your stitch markers a little bit more versatile if you've got some lobster claw ones. And then some other stitch markers I got in the mail. Twill and Print had an update a couple of weeks ago. Um, and I got another row marker, row counter. This is like a summer seascape one. It's also on a lobster claw. I'll probably do the same thing. Hook it onto one of my hexagon stitch markers and stick it on my needles. Um, just because I don't like lobster claws on my stitches. Um, and I don't crochet much. And then I also got these, these other stitch markers of her. So you can see they say Sip Zip Knit and Yarnaholic. Both very true of me. Um, I love that the back is a ruler. Let me see if you can see it. It has a ruler for like, I think it measures up to two inches. No, one inch, sorry. It measures up to one inch, um, which is great because I am that person who's constantly measuring because I'm really impatient about how much progress I'm making. And then at the end too, which I love, is there's this little ring here where you can uh, stick some like bulb stitch markers so that you can store them there so that, you know, you don't need to be rummaging through your bag or bringing an extra bag for little stitch markers. Um, I use bulb stitcher markers a lot for marking my decrease rows on sleeves. So I can see myself like really using these during those times. Um, okay, so <laughs> what else I got in the mail? Where to start? Um, I guess we'll start here. So I signed up for the Breakfast Club pre-order that Lobby NMA, Moondrake Yarn, and Nerd Birds uh, Makery did um, back in May, I think, was when they announced it. And so that came in the mail this week. Let me show you those. So it came with this cute set of uh, stickers and a pin from Nerd Bird Makery. So freaking cute. Yeah, I was really excited about this when they announced it. I just felt like I had to have it something Asian inspired and Asian breakfast food inspired. Like, I just, like, how could I not? Um, and then the yarn that came. So let me show you. So Lobby and May did two colorways and Moondrake did two colorways. Lobby and May did this one. This is Puffle. Little speckles. And this is uh, Girenbop. I hope I'm saying that right. There's little brown brownish, blackish speckles in the yellowy. And then Moondrake Yarn did Onigiri here. It's got a little flecks of pink throughout and that kind of brownish, greenish seaweedy. And also Mochi Donut. So these colors um, are like a little bit out of my usual palette and wheelhouse, but I'm really excited to figure out what to do with them um, and to just work with them. I love both Moondrake Yarn and La Anime a lot. Um, and so I'm just excited to have these in my stash and figure out exactly what they will become. 
later. If you have any ideas, you know, you can drop them in the comments below. I know they're also doing a knit along, and so I've been kind of looking at the Ravelry thread that Moondrake has for that to see what other people are doing to get some ideas too. All right, the other things I got in, my, in the mail. So I also got some Morning Glory fibers. This is from Laura. She is also a designer. Her designer account is Modesty by Laura. And she recently started dyeing yarn. And so I got this set. So I got, so I think she only had like, so I got, this is blue and gray. It is um, inspired by BTS in their blue and gray song. And so you can see it's like kind of a off-white grayish base with lighter and darker blue bits throughout. And I got two sock sets and like one single skein. And this is because this is for a secret design. Not that I'm making, someone else is making. I'm not going to say anything until she's ready to, I guess, announce it. But um, what she did tell me was that it would be an MC in kind of like three CC colors. So I got the sock sets because I really liked these little um, mini mini skein in the dark in this like blue colorway and I have plenty of blue in my stash that I will also add to that to make the other two CC colors so yeah morning glory fibers go ahead and check her out she's a new dyer I also got some more red pansy yarn um in addition to the June Monet colorway I asked her to dye up um some a, some color specific for my daughter's vest. So my daughter saw my son's in the pocket sweater that I showed you last time, and she decided she wanted one too, but she wanted one without sleeves. She wanted a vest, but she really loved that pocket on there. And so she went through my stash. She fell in love with hibiscus from the Red Pansy. I had it in a sock set, um, and I was originally going to hold a double and just ask Kelly to maybe dye me another sock set, but Kelly was so kind, and she said, you know what, I'll just dye it up in DK for you so you don't have to worry about, you know, converting yardage or making sure you have enough. So I got two skeins. This one looks terrible because my toddler got a hold of it and was shaking it around and totally ruined, like, the nicely wound-up skein. He actually ruined both of them. Um, I tried to re-skein it, and I'm not good at twisting them, so this is what it looks like now. Sorry. Um, but yeah, look how pretty that is. Hibiscus was also part of her summer colorway release that she just did, her summer tangy set, summer tangy collection, and then um, Lagoon for the CC, for the pocket and the um, collar and ribbing. Yeah, so that's what... It'll be together for her. My daughter really loves color. She really loves bright colors, and she loves anything purpley, pink. So this is absolutely perfect for her. I'm actually a little surprised that she chose the blue for her CC, but yeah, I'm not complaining about that. All right, next up that came in, I got my pre-order from Explorer Fibers, Explorer Knits and Fibers in. Um, this is her Into the Wild collection, and the pre-order was done, I think it was like three months ago. Anyway, I can't remember. It was a long time ago, which is okay, because she got a lot of orders, and at least this way there's no um, stress about being carjacked or anything like that. Um, I much prefer that way of shopping. So first off, I got Lone Wolf. It's, one of the, it's a beautiful neutral Lone Wolf. And I also got, I'm going to, that's going to be, I have plans for these to be the Hide and Peak sweater by Max the Knitter. Um, so this will be like the CC, and then for the um, color work, I've got Docile, Drift, and Timber. There we go. Yeah, so I'll, I'll hold it together with this. Yeah, I'm really excited for it. It'll be kind of like a muted fall moody um, sweater. I'm going to make it short-sleeved as well. Uh, yeah, I really love how they look together. Um, I know Allie is usually known for a lot of her variegated colorways, but I also really love the tonals that she does. And I really loved the tonals that she had for this collection. They were just kind of like moody and um, a little muted, but still like rich and full of color. Yeah, I love them. So I got that. And I also got for her a variegated colorway, To the Sea. And I got this in preparation to use it with Woolberry's 20,000 colorway that she did to celebrate 20,000 orders. And I'm going to use them together. And my plan right now is to use them for the floating magnolia tea that Tina St. Knits has in testing right now. I actually really wanted to test it, but um, 
uh, the yarn hadn't come yet. And I knew that I, I wanted it so badly to make these two together for that. So I decided, you know what, I will wait until the pattern's out. By then I will have the yarn and then I can make it. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited. I'm going to hold these two together or not hold it together, but um, one will be the main color, one will be the contrast color. Uh, yeah, I'm really excited to kind of use these together. They look absolutely be beautiful together. Yeah. Okay. Okay, what else I got? Um, so then also, my friend Megan, also known as Kimchi and Co. on Instagram, um, you guys, if you watch uh, Arrow Knits and Pearls, you might have seen that she did a yarn swap night with her and another friend of theirs. Um, and I guess they all wanted to get rid of blue colored weight yarn and no one else wanted it. And so Megan asked me if I wanted some of the blue yarn that she didn't want. And I mean, who says no to free yarn? Like really, who? Um, so she sent me some blue yarn. She sent me Forest Fiber Arts. This is Targi Worsted in the lovebirds colorway she sent me i think there's like five of these which was like super it was so generous i couldn't believe how much yarn she was sending me so it's this kind of pale bluish grayish color and she also sent me three irish girls in their adorned luke's base and this is the colorway skinny jeans it's a perfect navy blue okay the light is kind of blowing it out a little bit that's better yeah. Yeah. So she sent me three skeins of these and this is fingering weight. So both of these are like pretty much sweater quantities. Um, but yeah, thank you, Megan, for sending me yarn. I have a package going out to her that should be going out tomorrow of just some yarn that um, I probably won't use anymore. And I asked her if she wanted it in return um, to kind of use in her stash. And she said yes. So I'll be sending that out this week, Megan. Um, but yeah, thank you, Megan, so much for sending me the yarn. All right, we are almost done going through the yarn. So then, um, okay, so I told you earlier, my siblings left today. Um, I always feel like a little sad when people leave, like visitors leave. I don't know why. Like, I don't feel quite so sad when I'm the one who visited and is leaving. But when I think it's like the feeling of being left behind. <laughs> I don't know. It's odd. But I do always feel a little blue on the day that my family in particular, like, leaves from visiting. And so I swung by my local yarn shop on my way home to cheer myself up. And, um, and yeah, so let me show you what I got. Um, so my local yarn shop is Hill Country Weavers. Um, they're a little far from me, but um, worth the drive. And the airport's, like, only 10 minutes away from there. So it was a great place to stop after. So first I got Life in the Long Grass. I've been wanting to try Life in the Long Grass for a while. They are, um, I think it's dyed in in, Ir in Ireland. Yes, it's dyed in Ireland. Um, one thing I love about Hill Country Weavers is they do a lot of indie dyers and they bring in a lot of indie dyers like from parts of the world, uh, outside of the country, where normally maybe shipping prices or something would prohibit you from trying it out. Um, they do a lot of local ones too, local dyers, local indie dyers. So this is a colorway Wolf. And now that I look at it, it looks kind of similar to Wolf Wolf that I just showed you from Explore Knits. Except that, so this is Explore Knits and this is Life in the Long Grass. Um, Life in the Long Grass is like a little creamier color to it and it's got these speckles of color. Yeah, anyway, this is the Sock Base Fine Sock. Um, really love this. Um, and then I also got some Lobby NMA. Um, so Hill Country Weavers is going to start stocking them. I'm really excited about that. Uh, really excited. My wallet is not excited, but I am excited. Um, and so I first, I picked up some of the BFL Tough Sock, BFL Tough Sock Base. And this colorway is Glacier. So it's like this gray, minty green colorway with speckles. I really hope the color is showing up well on this. I feel like this is all looking a little blown out. So I'm really sorry, you guys. Let me put you. I feel like it's pretty good. Sorry, I'm playing with the color saying my ring light to try to. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, yeah. 
So it is, it feels so soft, you guys. Um, so like my summer Sorel is also in a BFL base. And I like, to be honest, like it does feel like a little rougher to me than Merino does. Um, and that base is from Yarn Love. Um, but I figured, you know, I will try it out and it'll probably soften after blocking. And my skin is very sensitive to begin with. But this one, like I did not even realize it was BFL until I looked at the label. Um, I mean, now when I look at it closely, now knowing it's BFL, I can see the like the little... Um, bits of fiber that's different from merino but oh my gosh it feels almost like merino um yeah but anyway i'm really excited about this colorway and then i also picked up some sport merino sport and this is the colorway caramel it's so autumn -y. i really love it it's so rich i don't know what i'm doing with it yet i don't know what i'm doing with any of this well like any of the yarn i showed you today all the other yarn i showed you i have plans for um but like the yarn I got today, I just kind of was like picking things that brought me joy and made me happy, um, made me excited and inspired. And, you know, once in a while, I feel like you got to, you know, shop like that a little bit, you know. Um, but, yeah, I, I think the let's see these two, they will definitely be like teas of some sort. Um, I'm really into making teas these days, if you can't tell. Um, the Merino Sport, you know, it's enough yardage. It's like um, 355 yards is enough for like maybe like a short sleeve sweater. I think I would probably find some sort of color work and ha find a uh, contrast color in my stash to pair with it. And then we'll see. Like there wasn't anything in the store that I wanted to pair with it contrast wise that was really speaking to me. So I figured I would just buy this and I will find something for it eventually. Yeah. Anyway, so yes. So that is all the yarn I've gotten recently. Um, it was a lot. I told you it was a lot. Uh, but hopefully it brought you some joy to kind of look at all the yarn I got and all the joy it's bringing me. And um, I love that when I look at my yarn now, it reminds me of friends, of friendship, of, yeah, um, because a lot of these uh, dyers um, or people who gifted me yarn, um, they're all mostly people I have had conversations with on Instagram. Um, and I just, it, it's extra special to me when I can look at the yarn and and know that I know the person behind it a little bit too. Yeah, that's really special. Um, yeah. Oh, did I forget to? Oh, I forgot to show you one more thing. So Megan also snuck in the skein of Woolberry. This is serene. This greenish color. Yeah. Anyway, if you can't tell, I really like blues and greens a lot. But I also really like neutrals. I kind of like them all. And ever since becoming friends with Aro and kind of, you know, seeing so many of her knits, I kind of really like pastels too. Uh, I am all over the place, you guys. Um, nothing wrong with that. Um, okay, so before I say goodbye for today, I will share with you the wellness tip for this podcast. So today's wellness tip is about lighting. So my uh, one of my tips to you to help improve your posture when you're knitting is to make sure your lighting is really good. And part of that is because if you're knitting in really dim light or you don't have much lighting at all, even if you start out in really good posture, inevitably you will kind of end up looking closer and closer at work because you, you can't see it. Um, I have been, in the past year, made a really conscious effort to make sure I have lots of good lighting. Whenever I'm knitting, I will turn on more lights than I think I need. And that's really gone a long way in preventing me from kind of ending up in this position where I'm looking down my work and my head's hanging over um, my desk or hanging over my lap. Um, and that, make, that goes a long way in helping to make sure your neck and your upper back feel good too. So that's my tip. Make sure you have good lighting. Turn on all the lights you need, even if it's more than you think you need. Um, it's good, you know, that's better for your eyesight and it'll be good for your posture as well. These will prevent you from ending up in bad postures and trying to crane your body around to see your work, especially if you're knitting with really dark colored yarn too. Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna sign off now. This has been a pretty long uh, video. Um, sorry about that, but hopefully you enjoyed seeing all my stash and all my whips. Um, and I will probably come back in about two to three weeks, um, and share some more things with you. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did go ahead and, uh, like the video, or you can subscribe, or you can come and find me on Instagram and DM me with any questions you have. Um, I love talking to people and kind of learning from all of you and getting inspiration from all of you as well, too. Um, so until then, happy knitting. Bye.